Good morning, everybody. We are congratulating winners of the WCBI Viewer's Choice this week, and all eyes are on Curtis Optometry Group winner of Best Eye Clinic. Dr. Anna Claire Spradling Dalrymple is here at the table with us this morning, and congratulations. Thank you. Great to have you here. <laughs> Good to meet you. When I read this this morning, all I could think was, I can see clearly now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you help a lot of people see clearly, don't you? We try. <laughs> Let's so first of it began talking about taking care of your eyes. When we think about yearly appointments, we think about going to the doctor, you know, women think about going to the gynecologist, but eye care is very important too, like checking on the eyes. It is, absolutely. So a lot of times systemic health or your overall health can translate into your eyes. Mm -hmm. We see lots of patients with diabetes that unfortunately can really affect the eyes. Mm -hmm. um, the leading cause of blindness in the United States in adults is diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's very important to have your eyes checked just for the sake of, do you have high blood pressure? Is it affecting your eyes? Do you have diabetes? Mm -hmm. Is it affecting your eyes? Mm -hmm. So those are things that you can find out with yes. an appointment. The other thing you and I spoke about before we came on is a common problem that you see probably come in your clinic and I see here all the time is astigmatism. What is that and why it's so common? Yes, so a lot of people, and to be honest with you, the majority of the population probably has a mild astigmatism. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the curvature of your eyes. So you may hear it said in one direction it's curved like a basketball and another direction your cornea is curved like a football. Mm -hmm. And so that creates um, lights to spread out. It creates glare issues sometimes mm -hmm. if we don't correct it. All right. At what point, and would I know that it is at a problem for me? Would I be able to know that something's going on and I need to see the doctor? That's a good question as well. If mm -hmm. you're squinting a lot, mm -hmm. even in the glasses that you have, or your child is squinting, um, or like I said, if lights are spreading out mm -hmm. on you and look like starbursts, you might have a problem with astigmatism. Do you see many patients who, like I, was in denial for a long time <laughs> after I hit 40, like things started looking a little fuzzy and I go, ah, uh, maybe it's just because it's at night, not the issue at all. My eye, my eyesight was declining. Yes, so I've had several of those patients today, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard conversation it to is, say, well, yeah. it's because of, you know, your AGE, mm -hmm. but that's okay. And yes, we see those regularly and thankfully we're able to provide them with um, correction, whether it be contacts or glasses that help with that to be able to see. Speaking of contacts and glasses, when I was growing up and, you know, in high school and junior high, friends uh -huh. that had to have glasses, nobody wanted glasses. They all wanted to yes. do contacts because right. they didn't want to wear glasses. But right. now there's so many cool styles and colors. It's kind of fun That's now, exactly isn't it? exactly right. And we have an awesome selection. I'm mm -hmm. putting in a shameless plug That's here. That's okay. That's why um, you're here. <laughs> that's right. That are fabulous for men and women, um, whether it be you like a fun color, kind of mm -hmm. like yours, uh -huh. or if you like something very subtle, we have the clear frames. Mm -hmm. You know, you can. You can change your style day in, day out with your glasses. Let's talk about something we are all exposed to on a daily basis, and that's screens. We're watching yes. television, we're looking at computers, we're looking at our phones. <laughs> what is this doing to our eyes? Right, great question. Um, when we're looking up close, our focusing system is really kicking in, and mm -hmm. it's working really hard for us. And just like lifting a weight, mm -hmm. you're not meant to hold that weight for hours at a time, just like we're looking at the screen and focusing for hours at a time. Mm -hmm. um, so potentially it's causing more eye fatigue, as you've heard, mm -hmm. computer vision syndrome is um, an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, now taking breaks from the computer is always wise. Okay. Um, blue blockers, you know, Case studies say, yes, they're helpful for decreasing that blue light. Mm -hmm. um, blue light actually impacts our sleep patterns. And so um, we really encourage people to at least wear their glasses mm -hmm. um, at night when they're on the computer okay. to help prevent sleep issues caused by blue light. And just kind of put these down. Just yeah, a bit. <laughs> take a break. Much. Again, congratulations right. to you. We want to let Thank people you. know in the last couple of seconds, you do have a second location in East Columbus, right? We do, okay. absolutely, Columbus Vision Group. Oh. All right, great to see you and congratulations. Thank you again. very much. All right, <laughs> it's a great place to work and it does a lot for the community. Another winner when mid-morning returns. Welcome back everyone. They employ hundreds of people in our area and they're always looking for more great employees. SDI is the winner of Best Industrial Workplace in the WCBI Viewer's Choice. Dan Cowan is the General Manager for Steel Dynamics Flat Roll Steel Division. And great to have you here, Dan, and congratulations. Thank you, just honored to be here. As we mentioned, you know, coming in, hundreds of people uh, work out there at SDI, but you're always looking for new employees. Who's a good fit for SDI? 
A good, good fit for SCI is mainly people with a great attitude that are willing to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, we're always looking for, for lots of people, especially with our expansion of, of aluminum dynamics. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be hiring upwards of 700 people wow. uh, to fill those jobs. So we're looking for good, reliable people that we can train uh, to do a good job for us and kind of with an entrepreneurial spirit mm -hmm. that can help us improve our business on a daily basis. People have neighbors, friends, church members who work there. They hear the name SDI. They may not exactly know what you do. So what is it that goes on out there in that big building? So Steel Dynamics is a big company. At, at our division, we make flat rolled steel. Okay. It goes into lots of different products. It goes into your general uh, metal, metal buildings with metal roofing. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes into a lot of automobile business. So we supply Ford, we supply Stellantis, we supply BMW, Mercedes, lots of different mm -hmm. automotive customers a lot of industrial pipe and tube type products. So mm -hmm. we supply the energy market a lot. So we're making a lot of coiled steel that gets further processed into, into OEM type products at the end of the day. What's the skill set you need to have to work in that environment? So like I said, we train most of our people to, okay. to do the job. So mm -hmm. if you, like I said, if you come in with a good attitude and you're willing to learn, uh, mm -hmm. we can teach you to wrap coils or we can t teach you to add coatings to coils or we can teach you to slit coils or, or whatever we need done to, to, to mm -hmm. send the coils to our customers. So uh, we do hire a lot of skilled trades as far as mill rights and electricians go. Okay. We hire a lot of metallurgists. We hire a lot of mechanical and electrical engineers. So mm -hmm. we have kind of a breadth of different fields out, out in the facility. I know several people who work out at SDI and you know when people think of an industrial environment they think you know, it's grueling and all this but most of the people that I've spoken with really love the environment, the culture of the place out there. Is that something you work hard on? Yeah there? and that's one of the founding principles of our company is our operating culture and mm -hmm. it really boils down to our employees doing a great job and making us better every day. Mm -hmm. We listen to their ideas, they're the ones making the steel and they're the ones making us better. So that's what has drove the success of our company all along is the culture mm -hmm. and the people we bring in and putting them in the right places to be successful. The people that you bring in live in many places in this area, Columbus, Starkville, West Point, some of them in points beyond that. So you all are very invested in the community because those people are part of your family, right? Yeah, it, everyone that works here, we're upwards as a company, we're upwards of 40,000 total people, including families of our employees. Mm -hmm. Here in Columbus, uh, the, 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 the steel mill is 870-ish employees. Wow, yeah. And with Aluminum Dynamics, we're getting ready to expand to close to 2,000 employees. Mm -hmm. So it's very exciting and we treat everyone like they're part of the family, right? And the, the biggest thing for our employees is that they stay, stay safe every day and go home to their employees the same way, or I'm sorry, to their children, their family, family the same way they came to work. There's lots of excitement. You've mentioned ADI twice as we've been sitting here. There is a lot of excitement surrounding, you know, the groundbreaking has happened. And when that hiring process starts, we've had people calling us already, yeah. by the way, going, yep. what are they hiring? But that, that sort of uh, excitement that's generated around it and knowing that we have the workforce ready to fill those positions, it's great for you. Oh, it's exciting for us, right? We're we're happy to locate our new facility in Columbus, Mississippi, because the, the, the local communities worked very well with us, mm -hmm. uh, been big supporters of us, and we've tried to give back and support the same way. All so right. that's one of the reasons we accept this. The state of Mississippi has been awesome to Steel Dynamics, and we wanted to return some of that with our new division and, and put it here, and it makes a lot of sense for us. All right, well, we're glad to have you as part of the family here in the Golden Triangle in Lowndes County. And again, congratulations. Thank to you very much. Great Appreciate it. Here. All right. Stay with us. We'll have more mid-morning right after this. Welcome back. A new Department of Education report shows that America's school children are reporting the highest number of discrimination and sexual harassment complaints in history. A CBS News investigation found that by the time they graduate high school, more than 5 million students have experienced sexual misconduct ranging from harassment to assault. Meg Oliver explains how the abuse is often overlooked. When some schools hear allegations of teacher sexual abuse, they often try to make them go away quietly without any record. It's called passing the trash. Passing the trash. And when they move on, would they write them recommendation letters? Yeah, they'd, they'd, give, them a, they'd give them recommendations, they'd give them approvals. On average, one offender passes through three different school districts before they're stopped. We found one teacher was able to abuse a total of 73 children. We focused on one district in Redlands, California, where 50 survivors have accused 25 teachers of sexual misconduct from 1999 to 2022. When you were a sophomore, who was your theater teacher? Bill Kuntz. 
Joel Koontz was hired by Redlands High School in 2016 after he was fired from a Texas summer camp. He told students it was because he had sex with a girl who was underage, but his record was clean. Within a year, a school employee called the police, reporting Koontz for suspicions of sexual abuse at Redlands High. The school quietly put him on leave and let his contract expire. He told us to come to his house and he gave us a lot of alcohol. He just started kissing us, and one thing led to another, we started having sex. This was 2018. Joel Koontz was arrested, and after, he went on to be a substitute teacher mm -hmm. in a nearby district. Mm -hmm. And just shows that, like, it could have been prevented, and it, and it wasn't. Koontz is currently in prison, but is up for parole this month. The Federal Department of Education is currently investigating 145 public school districts across the country for allegations of sexual violence, including Redlands Unified. This is a phenomenon of child abuse that we allow to happen under our noses. How is that possible? We have insufficient collective will as a country to stop it. In response to our investigation, Redlands Unified told us they have taken swift and appropriate actions when there has been a violation of law. The district has paid out more than $41 million in settlements to students and their families for allegations of teacher sexual abuse in 23 cases. Nine more lawsuits are ongoing. Meg Oliver, CBS News, New York. So this is a rare area of agreement for lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Internet guardrails for young people. Nicole Killian introduces us to a Texas teenager who survived cyberbullying and a new law aiming to protect her and all young people online amid a worsening mental health crisis. Like many teens, 14-year-old Jasmine Hernandez uses social media, but last year the Texas student became a victim of racist cyberbullying. It was a lot of like cyberbullying with like pictures of me imposed on someone hanging on a tree or like um, the KKK surrounding someone burning on a cross. Jasmine missed school for three weeks and spent the rest of the year in counseling. One of the things that the licensed school professional uh, counselor said was if she did not have the faith that she had, she would have committed suicide. That's major to me. That This is my baby we're talking about. It's families like the Hernandezes that Connecticut Democrat Richard Blumenthal and Tennessee Republican Marsha Blackburn hope to impact with the reintroduction of the Kids Online Safety Act in the Senate. Why were you able to connect around this piece of legislation? Uh, first and foremost, we're both parents. It may be at one of my grandkids' ball games, and parents will come up and they'll say, you know, I saw something online. Their bill would give parents new controls to identify harmful behavior and report negative content. It would also require social media companies provide options for minors to protect their information and disable addictive features. There would be a responsibility on these platforms to monitor what is there, things that cause self-harm. According to a recent CDC survey, nearly one in three teen girls seriously considered suicide. And the senators also point to studies showing teen depression doubled over the past decade. We're in the midst of a mental health crisis and moms are coming forward and saying, big tech is aggravating and exacerbating. In fact, profiting from driving toxic content at kids. TikTok says its guidelines don't allow content that could lead to suicide, self-harm, or unhealthy eating behaviors. Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram, told CBS News, we've developed more than 30 tools to support families and will continue evaluating proposed legislation. While Snap said we offer extra protections for Snapchatters aged 13 to 17 and will continue our work with policymakers. I am more careful on it. Jasmine has returned to social media and her mom thinks the proposed legislation could help protect her and others. There has to be some accountability. This is one of several bills targeting social media, and it's an issue that's increasingly finding agreement between Democrats and Republicans. Today, Senators Markey and Cassidy introduced a bill that would protect kids' privacy online, and last week, a bipartisan measure was proposed that would bar kids under the age of 13 from using social media. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill. It's a milestone for teenagers, but some are waiting to get behind the wheel. That story ahead on this morning. 
Well, it used to be teenagers would count down the days until they could get a driver's license, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore, and more teenagers are waiting to start driving. Andrea Lucia tried to find out why. At 18, Katherine Franklin is learning to drive. Hello, woman, trying not to hit you. And like all parents, oh gosh, her mother Amy is learning to let her. I'm making more noises. She would just be like, ah, yeah. Ah. Catherine didn't feel the need to get a license the moment she turned 16. I really was not interested in driving. I didn't really enjoy the idea of it. More parents are getting that shock of realizing their kids are in no rush to start driving. The Federal Highway Administration reports back in 1993, more than 42% of 16-year-olds had licenses. That's now down to just 25%. In the same period, the rate of 18-year-olds with licenses has dropped from 72% to just below 60. So what's changed? The license is not that rite of passage that it once was. When parallel parking. Chad Henry has been teaching teens to drive for nearly three decades and says these days they're more anxious. The kids are becoming more and more afraid of doing it. Anxiety is something several teens without licenses told us was a major factor, including Catherine. Studies have shown today's teens are more prone to it. I don't know if you grew up watching like car accidents on TV and YouTube. It's also easier now to get away without having a driver's license. Rideshare apps like Uber and Lyft are easily available. And finally, there's the price. But there's no small cost associated with driving. Insurance rates skyrocket. Americans, though, aren't ready to give up on driving altogether. By the time we're 21, the generational gap has nearly disappeared. A sign we may just be taking our time. Should I go or let them? Andrea Lucia, CBS News, Dallas. Well, the nominations are out for the 76th annual Tony Awards. CBS's Jamie Wax got a behind-the-scenes look at one of this year's most talked-about shows, Life of Pi. Life of Pi. From best-selling novel <laughs> to Oscar removal <laughs> to hit play, The Life of Pi has captivated audiences with a tale of literal captivity. The story centers around a boy named Pai Patel and a Bengal tiger who struggled to stay alive while adrift on a small boat. Iran Abbasakara has portrayed the title character on stage from the beginning. I think we all thought, oh wow, we have something special that could, that could take us places. Those places included London's West End, where the production received five Olivier Awards, including a highly unusual Best Supporting Actor for the puppetry team, which includes Scarlett Wildering. There's lots of people working together, designers, makers, sculptors, actors, so many people backstage and on stage that do so much to make this happen. Bringing the tiger to life. All of the sounds are made by the puppeteers, correct? That's right. All right, so let's hear a tiger roar, guys. <laughs> Okay, I'm leaving. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much. But with five Tony nominations, they hope they won't be leaving Broadway anytime soon. Jamie Wax, CBS News, New York. And we'll be right back. Stay with us. Back, everyone. You may have heard her name. Lisa Hawkins is busy from community work to owning a small business to being a parent and grandparent. Room to Room Furniture is winner of the best furniture store in the WCBI viewers choice and we are so happy to have Lisa here with us this morning. Thank you so very much for having me Congratulations today. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Let's talk about being in the furniture business and you know some of the other guests we've talked to about having that family relationship with their customers. Certainly you do. Oh, we certainly do. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like that furniture store is our big home. Mm -hmm. And we invite you in and want you to feel comfortable when you come in our home mm -hmm. so that we can find the right things that you want for your home. When people are coming in, you know, to buy, you know, there may be a dining room or the bedroom. What do you like to know from them when they come in? Well, it's always good if you can bring some photos, some magazine pictures, some things that you like so that we can narrow it down and find exactly what you think you're looking for. And then we can give you some tips too. 
In addition to being a, a successful businesswoman there in Tupelo, you are also very involved in the community. As a matter of fact, you got an award not long ago from ICC, the uh, Leadership Award. Talk about being recognized for being involved in the community and why it's so important to you. Well, so many people have invested in me in my life, and I feel like it's a time for me to be able to give back. Mm -hmm. It is so much fun to invest in other people's lives, watch them grow, and um, see, you know, what they become. Mm -hmm. People have watched your business grow. They've watched your family grow over yes. the years. We've seen some of the, your children and grandchildren yes. in some of your commercials. Um, that's fun to have them a part of the business too, isn't it? We do. It's very, we're very, very family oriented. Our staff, we are, we're like a big family. We have so much fun together. Like last week, we all wore pajamas to work. I saw that. And, yes, <laughs> and that, it was just a, a team building uh, opportunity, mm -hmm. but we really really do love each other and we want to invest back into our communities mm -hmm. because it's where we live. Like any other business, you know, you have the ups and downs with the economy, with yes. the furniture industry, you know, manufacturers closing, some opening. Um, how do you deal with that and sort of try to be resilient even in the, the, the tougher times? Well, we've been very, very blessed with extraordinary business the past few years. Mm -hmm. Things have uh, stabilized and we can get merchandise now, which is That's great. very important. Mm -hmm. But we just continue to uh, do what we do. Yes. Um, do the fun things, be involved in the community. Mm -hmm. But as I told my people back when everything was so crazy, uh -huh. I said, you need to be like a little squirrel and save some nuts <laughs> because winter time will come. Uh -huh. So you don't spend everything that you make. That's right. And then we try to reinvest in local businesses, mm -hmm. uh, furniture business. We do North Carolina furniture also, mm -hmm. but we want our people here to have jobs also. Absolutely. Well, you are doing a fantastic job. The family atmosphere that you've created there and your love for the community um, is one of the things more certainly that sustains you. So again, congratulations. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so you very much. You have to say one time, there's no place like home before there's you There's no place like home. <laughs> we were waiting <laughs> on it. <laughs> Thank you so much again. And Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. We will be uh, meeting more of our viewers' choice winners later in the week. That's all for now. We'll see you back here tomorrow.